This is Anne Gunn, and I'd like to welcome you to the spring 2022 um, section of Microsoft 1520, um, and to give you a tour of how I use Canvas in this course. Um, I try to use, um, be as simple and consistent in how I use and organize my Canvas courses as I can. But because I know I'm doing some things that are different than what you have seen before in previous IT courses, I thought it would be useful to um, try to walk through the Canvas interface and, and um, see if I can remember to point out the places where either my Canvas organization is different or my course policy is different than what you might be used to. I don't want to blindside anybody. Um, and, the, and the semesters always start out pretty fast. So, um, so I'd like to just um, give you a heads up on things that I think you need to know right away. So um, this is the student view in Canvas. It's as close as an instructor can get to seeing the course um, the same way it looks when you come to it. Um, so let's see. I tend to make my, my courses really simple. Um, this, you may in the past have had a home module and a, mo and a modules page. Um, I condense those into one place. So you have one place to go for all of your work through the semester. Um, you are gonna have a few discussions. So that option is here and you can see your grades. But this is really, you don't need to be able to navigate to things multiple ways. Everything you want um, is here. Uh, you may have had in the past a document um, called an assessment checklist. And Canvas is your assessment checklist. Um, everything you need to um, accomplish or to work on is listed here in Canvas. Okay. So um, the course references here at the top, I've got a page for COVID-19 protocols, a page on general um, overview information and um, instructor contact, and a page on um, that gets you the syllabus and some other online learning resources. So, um, so let me just go through those. These are the college's COVID protocols. I wouldn't expect these to change um, over the course of the semester, but if there are changes, um, they'll be posted here. And then the, the gold standard for the information is, is in this Sheridan.edu updates page. This um, overview page gives you my contact information. And um, you may need to reach out to me if you have questions about course content, if you have questions about the test out interface. So um, email works great. Um, Slack, which will be explained in the week one material, works great. And I recommend those two ways as trying to reach me. Um, there's also a page with the course official syllabus and my course handbook. Um, I tend to break some of the detailed information that many instructors put at the end of their syllabus out into a separate document called a course handbook. Um, and there is a quiz um, that's primarily focused on those two documents in week one um, due on Thursday. And so um, you should try to read both of those. Um, a semester calendar overview and um, some links to other college resources. Okay, so um, the week one module here is not particularly typical. Um, this is more typical of my other classes where you actually start out by looking at a slide deck and I describe what's happening um, during the course of the week and what your assignment is and there's this quiz. Um, what's more going to be more typical for you in this course are modules two, three. Okay, so um, basically, I think you should find Canvas easier to navigate um, than you have in the past and less busy. So um, each module, which is generally a week, OK, um, starts with a couple of things at the top. They'll either be a reminder to send in a status email um, and directions for that are in the slides and in the handbook or a um, discussion forum. So we'll be alternating those. OK, um, if there's a quiz that week, that'll appear at the top. And then underneath that are your test out activities. OK, each of the activities for each of the test out chapters starts with a link. And I'm going to click that here in a minute. But then the items for which I am accumulating points 
and you are going to base your grade on are listed underneath that. Um, and I am not pulling in every single activity that is in test out. So I'm not bringing in points for watching a video. I'm not bringing in points for viewing a page. Um, so let's just go take a look at, um, at like chapter two here um, in test out. Oh, that's right. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to go to my version. Isn't that interesting? I've never tried getting to test out. That's so cool. Okay, so it knows we want to launch test out, but when I'm in my student guise, I can't actually launch it. So let's take a look at the um, course outline in um, in test out. So in test out, you have these different chapters, okay, and you're expected to master all the material in each chapter. But I'm not collecting scores for everything. So um, I really don't care how much time you spend on a page like Windows Server's Facts. Um, I expect you to master the material on there, um, but sometimes there may be a video for that. Sometimes you may already know that material if you've been working in this area for a while. What I care about is, and what I'm, you can see with these green marks here, what I'm, oh, actually the green marks are the ones I did while I was preparing. So what you'll see in the Canvas interface is that for each of these practice questions, there is a place in the gradebook for that. And that's what your grade is going to be based on, not 12 things out of this chapter, but, but basically one, two, three. Now, in later chapters where there are labs, okay, then um, these things with the mouse are a lab. So for there, I'll be pulling both the lab score and the practice question score. So you're still going to see a lot of entries in each week. And I guess we'll just go ahead and look at it from my perspective. Okay. So if I go down to module two, which is chapter three, there are, there's the link to that chapter. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, gradable activities. All of them are practice questions for the different chapters, except for this one, which is a lab. Okay. You know, there's, can't tell that with the icon, but basically it either says practice questions or it says lab. Okay, so um, I think this will make Canvas more responsive for you um, and for me. When we get too many things loaded into the Canvas shell, um, Loading this page gets slow, loading the gradebook gets painfully slow. And although this is still by Canvas standards, a lot of individual items for each module or week, um, it's a lot better than if I was loading grades for absolutely everything that was in each of these chapters. Okay, um, one of the other differences I should point out is each of these um, items and all of the items for a module or a week will have the same due date. And this is a firm due date. Um, I think that in the past in IT courses, there's been this, um, what I've seen from courses that I've taken over was an odd policy that said, okay, here's the due date, but you have another week to get things in. And I found that very confusing. Um, I think students find that somewhat confusing. Some students just hit the original due date, some students just you know, end up having effectively a due, their due date be a week late every time. And because um, all of us work best against deadlines, right? I mean, I, I've been known to procrastinate myself. I understand that. So I want you to know that, that the due date that's listed is the due date, okay? Um, what I found was when there was this sort of floating week later real due date, what would happen is towards midterms and end of semester when um, there really wasn't any float because the scores had to be in in order for me to give people grades. People got really trapped because they had too much work to do. So, um, so due dates are firm. 
there is a late penalty. I will accept we um, work up to a week late, but there is a but there is a points penalty of eleven percent, um, which effectively, if you had large pointed assignments with large points, would be a letter grades worth. Um, but it's eleven percent or one grade. So, for example, when you've got these, when you've got very small um, point value items here, yeah, um, your you know, a practice question worth six points that's a week late is, a, you know, the best you can get on it is five points. So um, my recommendation is make life simple for both of us and simply just hit, hit the due dates. Um, the other thing I have to point out is that the chapters within, um, within test out are not at all even. So for example, one and two are quite small and I've thrown those into the first week. They should go quickly, there are no labs, okay? Four is fairly decent sized, but seven with Active Directory is just ginormous, okay? It's only mapped to one week in Canvas. <clears throat> and I've got a graphic, let me see if I can find the graphic in the week one slides. Okay, I've got a graphic that points this out, that the Canvas modules are tied to one or two chapters in test out. But the points are not even. Um, the average number of points per module is 68, I think, I did the math. But you can see that weeks six and seven have, um, well, twice that number and then almost twice that number. So um, the due dates are firm in terms of you can't, you shouldn't go past them. But what I super highly recommend is that in these early weeks of the course, you work ahead, okay? I recommend you try to be getting somewhere, getting through someplace between um, 60 and 70, test out chapter points a week so that by the time you get to module six, you've already got done a substantial number of these, of these Active Directory points. I mean, there's a reason why Active Directory is complicated. Um, managing people and managing organizations is complicated and hard. So there's a lot of material in that one unit. Um, and your job is to manage your time um, however you want to do it. I mean, you may find that what you want to do is clear the decks in week six and seven and simply, you know, have done other work ahead of time or not schedule any fun or whatever, or you may want to work ahead. Um, it really is a matter of personal time management, but I didn't want you to um, think that every one of these module weeks is the same size. They're not. I think the number of um, graded assignments, which is what is in this um, chart, is probably only an approximation of the workload. Um, and some of this will be easier because maybe you know some of it, but you need to be careful about how you manage your time and deal with the fact that you have these very uneven points distributions coming at you in module six and seven. I don't think there's anything else. No, I think, I think um, pay attention to Canvas. Um, I hope the, this use of Canvas works for you. I think it's simpler. It should be easier to know where to start and what to do. Um, and you can really focus on trying to master the test out material. Um, you will need to take a test out practice exam um, towards the end of the course. Um, that's a requirement and it's worth 10% um, of your grade. But um, we really want you to be able to get that test out certification. It's up to you whether you bother to take the official test or not, um, but I want to make sure you're as prepared as I can help you be to do that. And taking the practice exam seems like a great way to do that. So good luck with the semester. Let me know how I can help. Um, please ask questions. You've got my contact information. You'll be in a Slack channel with me, um, which is an easy um, IM direct message 
um, way to reach me and, um, and let me know how I can help. Thanks.